Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Welcome to uh, this week's uh, Ikna ILF webinar. Inshallah, the title this week is Individual and Collective Morality. Uh, and we'll be studying Surah Nisra verses 23 to 39, and today's presentation will be given by Imam Asif Hirani. Please go ahead. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala amma ba'd. Wa qadha rabbuka la ta'abudu illa iya wa bil walidayni ihsana imma yablughanna indaka al-kibara ahaduhuma aw kilahuma fala taqul lahuma uf wa la tanharhuma wa qul lahuma qawlan karima Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli wa ja'al li waziran min ahli amin ya rabbil alameen So I'd like to welcome you all in this webinar and I hope and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah make this webinar beneficial for all of us. Ameen, Ya Rabb. Um, so this passage from Surah Isra, or some people say this Surah Bani Israel, um, is extremely important because Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu an, one of the famous companion, famous for his tafsir, he said that just like you have in Torah the Ten Commandments, famous Ten Commandments, which was given to Musa, alayhi salam, this passage of Surah Isra, which we are supposed to study tonight from uh, 23 to uh, 39, is actually the Quranic version of that uh, Ten Commandments, which was given to Musa, alayhi salam. Very similar, uh, very so much, so many parallel you will see in this passage, and if you will read the Ten Commandments of Musa, alayhi salam. Um, so I will just mention one thing in introduction before we can start that. Um, in these uh, instructions, you are going to see a individual responsibility in terms of morality, and then a collective responsibility in terms of morality, what we have to do, what we do not have to do. And this tells us one thing before we can even start anything, that in Islam, if you want to achieve piety, in Islam, if you want to be pious or righteous, it cannot be possible just by individual act of worship. You have to be part of community. You have to give back to the community. You have to be part of the congregation. And then eventually uh, the good community uh, and society will be formed. Okay, now let's start. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this passage that your Lord have decided that you won't worship anyone except him. Um, after this uh, oneness of Allah, he immediately says, Wabil walidayni ihsana, and he also decided that you will do ihsan with your parents. There are a few things we, which we need to understand here. First and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The summary of our religion that is oneness of Allah, that you will worship none but Him. And immediately after mentioning His right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing the rights of the parents. And this is something interesting, not only here in this passage in Surah Isra, but there are numbers, there are several times in the Quran, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned right of parents right, right after mentioning his rights. There are actually five times in the Quran, the rights of Allah and rights of parents are mentioned next to each other. And the question comes, just like here, why rights of parents are mentioned right after the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the answer is, without going into too much philosophical discussion, is that because there are so many parallel, there are so many similarities between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and between what our parents do to us. So I'll just mention a few, just to appreciate uh, the similarity between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealing with the creation and parents dealing with the kids. That... Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator in the unseen. But our parents are the reason for our creation in the seen world. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us infinite favors. We cannot even count. 
and our parents give us infinite favor as well subhanallah we take favors of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granted because there are so many we take favors of our parents for granted because there are so many subhanallah if our friend will give us a ride in this winter maybe for work or maybe for a school we will going to say him thanks we'll going to text him 10 times thanks just to show our gratitude for that one ride and our parents have done so much but we'll take it for granted so there's so much similarity between allah's favors and the parents favors and similarly, this shows the higher status of parents that their right is coming right after the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this also shows one more thing, that rights of parents mentioned after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not before. So in terms of obedience, the right of Allah comes and then right of parent comes. But subhanAllah, this is one of the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention five times in the Quran, right of parents immediately after mentioning his rights. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wabil walidaini ihsana, you have to do ihsan with your parents. See, as I told you that this these ayat we're going to talk about how to build a healthy community, healthy society. The first and foremost uh, uh, step which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants us to take towards the healthy society is to make a healthy household. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking all the kids to take care of their parents. And once we all will have a healthy household, family unit, then eventually a family, uh, a good community, a good society will be formed. That's the first step. Allah says, Wabil walidaini ihsana. You have to do ihsan with your walidain. What is ihsan? Before I can actually tell you that, let me tell you that usually whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions any um, right of the parent, um, these ayat can be applied. But if you focus on these, this ayat especially, you will going to see that actually this is not only random regular parents, there are two conditions. If they are met by the parents, then these um, ayat will become more uh, inclusive. So first condition which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that First is that the parents have to be with you. And second is al-kibr, they have to be old. These two are the important conditions. If they are being met by the parents, then you have to apply all these things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. First is, if they are in old age. And second is, if they are with you, then obviously you have to do ihsan and then you have to do so on and so forth. And I will tell you that later. But why these two conditions are important? Because sometimes when you are, let's say here in America and your parents are living somewhere in back home, and if you are talking to them in WhatsApp and the conversation becomes rough, then it's easy to hang up the phone and say, Abba, signals got lost, and that's why I couldn't talk. But when they are staying with you for 24 hours, then it's hard to avoid them. That's first condition. Second is al-kibar. When they are even old, not only with you, but they are even old. When they are old, they become mad. They, they, they tend to become mad very easily, and you are hot-blooded. You are young. And they are using sarcastic comments all the time. They will come in your home and they will say, how you raise your kids? You don't know how to raise your kids, how to clean your house. Uh, you don't even know how to clean your car, how you are disciplining your kids. You don't know. Maybe they are sarcastic towards you or towards your spouse. If your parents are in that situation and they are with you, if these two conditions are met, then ihsana, then do ihsan with them. Even in these worst case scenario, if you have to show ihsan to them, nice behavior to them, then anything lesser to this will deserve more. Subhanallah. Wabil walidayni ihsana. Now, what is ihsan? Um, ihsan is uh, something in our akhlaq, in our dealing. We are dealing with the most beautiful attitude. We are dealing uh, in the most excellent way with our parents. And even ihsan can also mean to do something which is not expecting from you, like an extra favors. Um, like when you are with your parents, when Allah says, ihsana, You don't only have to obey them. You have to be extra nice with them. Sometimes give them random phone call when they are not expecting. Sometimes give them gifts. Maybe sharing good news with them. Uh, listening to their stories. You know, sometimes your old parents will going to share the same old story which they have shared maybe 10 times before. And you as a busy young individual, you might say, Abba, you have shared this story 10 times. Please move on. Bring some new stuff. No, you have to give respect to your parents. Um, 
and interestingly subhanallah there is one principle which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is um, in surah rahman allah says al jazaa li ihsani illa al ihsan that the compensation the reward of the ihsan is nothing but ihsan when i was thinking about this ayah subhanallah i came up with a it is a conclusion and i discussed with the, some of my teachers subhanallah and they all agreed to this and this is that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do ihsan with our parents when they become old and allah says in surah rahman that i will going to reward ihsan for ihsan it means when we are dealing with our parents and when we are dealing with them in the most beautiful excellent way in ihsan way then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to raise our kids in a way that they will going to do ihsan with us when we will be old subhanallah and this is so practical if i am yelling at my old parents if i'm screaming at my old parents and my kids are looking at me what do you think when i will become old and they will become adult they will do the same thing it's a payback time subhanallah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa bil walidayni ihsana may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to do ihsan with our parents amin ya rab then allah says how to do ihsan fala taqul lahuma uff one of the ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not even say the word uf. Uf is actually the least word of contempt. Uf is actually in, literally in Arabic, it's used for anything disgusting. It's also used for the nail nails clippings, uh, the word uf. So basically, a slight, a least word of contempt. Do not even express that. SubhanAllah, this is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say, do not feel bad. When your parents are old and they are making you mad, they are and something something wrong is being done in front of you it's very natural that you will feel bad but just as a respect of old parents you should not show the frustration and express the frustration and then allah says lahuma one of the other things what you can do to show ahsan to your parents is that when they are extremely old lower your wings of humility out of mercy this is very important subhanallah the phrase allah have used here this actually phrase in the in the in the ancient times as uh, Amin Ahsan Islahi argues that this phrase was used when the birds would protect their kids in the nest from the calamity and from the difficulty. Uh, similarly, I would give a parallel example. Let's say for rain or snow is coming um and um, if you don't have umbrella you will going to cover your baby even though you will get wet but you'll make sure your babies won't get wet so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the kid when the parents are old lower to them the wings of humility out of mercy remember the time when you were very young when you were infant when you were baby and they used to do this a lot now they are old do this as a respect take care of them and do this out of love. Subhanallah, Minar Rahmah tells us that some people take care of their parents and as they would, their motivation is that actually we are taking care of our parents because obviously they don't have any other option. Uh, it's a burden. But Allah did not say Minar Rahmah. Allah says Minar Rahmah. Take care of your old parents as a mercy, as a love. So, Or maybe some scholars say so that you can get mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Keep asking this dua, which is a very beautiful dua, subhanallah. Keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, have mercy on my parents. Just like they had mercy on me when I was young. And obviously, when we know we know that the old age is a second childhood, as William Shakespeare say. So when they reach to this second childhood, very old age, oh Allah, have mercy on them when they had mercy on me when I was young, subhanAllah. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all obedient sons and daughters. Ameen, Ya Rab. Now, before Allah can move forward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says one thing as an exception to the general principle or idealistic versus realistic situation. Allah says, Rabbukum a'lamu bima fi nufusikum in takunu salihina fa innahu kana lil awwabina ghafura. Allah says, Allah is well aware of what is in your heart. Why all of a sudden this ayah would come in between the rights of the parents? There is a wisdom behind this, subhanAllah. You know, many a times Allah told us that do not say off to your parents, your parents, you have to do ihsan. But there are some time when you have to, when you have to do something which might not be very pleasing to your parents. So sometime your parents 
might be verbally and physically abusive to you. Maybe, maybe, maybe after the marriage, this happens a lot that mother-in-law is oppressing daughter-in-law or vice versa. But I'm telling you the mother-in-law case because this ayah will going to be relevant for that. In that case, you are not supposed to support oppression or any kind of abuse. No, as a Muslim, we should not do that. But at the same time, you have to remain respectful. But at the same time, in a very respectful way, disagree. In a very respectful way, disagree. And then Allah says, Rabbukum alamu bima fi nufusikum. Even if you do that, even if you disagree, Allah knows your heart. Allah knows that you respect them in your heart, but just you cannot support someone in oppression because obviously that's, that's haram for a Muslim. Allah knows that. In takunu salihina, inna kana lil awabina ghafura. Even uh, if your heart is pious, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to know uh, and going to reward you based on your intention. Then after mentioning the rights of parents, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going from the individual to the family and to the community. Allah says, وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ And give the close relatives their right. This is very important, subhanAllah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have to be nice and we have to help our close family members. Not because it's an extra favor on our close family members. No, 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 no. Allah says it's their right, subhanAllah. We, whenever we give a gift or whenever we help a close family member, we think that actually we are doing an extra favor. It's not it's not, it's not something which is their right. Allah says, no, no, it's their right on your wealth, on yourself. So you have to help them. So there are three categories Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. First is you have to help your close family members. Al-Aqrabu fal aqrab Second, wal-miskeen, the needy people or the poor people. Now, the needy people are actually different than the beggars, sa'ilin. Um, this miskeen or the needy people which is mentioned here that we need to help them is that um, they might not ask because of their self-respect to help uh, to help them out. But you need to see their faces, you need to talk to them and see their circumstances, and you need to be proactive in helping them because their self-respect self -respect might stop them to ask for help. Wabin as sabil and the travelers, you need to help them. Now, tell me these three things. If you see, ponder on these three things, close relatives, needy or poor people, and the traveler. If you see one by one, like helping close relatives, can you do this without becoming active family member? Yes or no? No, you cannot do this if you are not active in family. So you have to be active in family to help each other. Then helping poor and needy. If in order to help the needy people in the community, you have to become active in community. And then even Wabna Sabil, helping travelers. How can you help the traveler without becoming active in community? When you are active in community, you know who is in from this community, and then all of a sudden you will see a new face, and then you will say, Akhi, I have seen you some I, I have not seen you somewhere. Where are you from? And you'll say, I'm a traveler, and then you will help them. So again, all these ayat are telling that we have to be part of the community or congregation. That's actually one of the one of the um, great things about Islamic teachings that Islam teaches us not only about how to be a good individual, but about how to be a uh, how to have a character uh, characteristic and morality which will impact in the community positively. And then Allah says, "Wala tubazir tabzira." After mentioning where to spend the wealth, close relatives, give the charity, help the poor, and there are so many avenues for that. The Allah says, Wala tubazir tabzira, do not waste your money. You know, when you have money, you can do either of few things. First, you can either spend your money on to charitable causes, help your family members. You can do this. And if you are not doing this, then either you are actually wasting your money in the haram way. And that's wala tubazir tabzira. So that's the relationship between this and that. So wala tubazir tabzira. Do not waste your money. I'll just mention a few things about this. Uh, tabzir is wasting of money. But especially in the wasting of money, you will see that in Islamic law, there are two terms used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, used by uh, used in the Islamic law. Um, there are two terms used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, Sharia. One is israf. Second is tabzir. Israf is used to spend money on halal things or needed thing more than it is required. Like a person is making wudu in the river and he's wasting water 
he's using water more than it's required. Rasulullah said to one companion in the same situation that you are doing israf. And he's saying, Rasulullah, I'm making wudu. How can it be israf, wasting of money? He said, no, this is israf. This is wastage of uh, natural resources. So to waste something uh, which, is, uh, which is needed to be done, but you are using more than required, or you're do spending more than required, that's called israf. But the israf is not mentioned here. Tabzir have mentioned. Tabzir is mentioned. Tabzir is actually worse form of wasting the money when you're wasting the money on haram things. Or some people argue wasting money on those things which are not even needed. So like wasting money on Atlantic City or wasting money of eighty, ninety thousand dollars on your five-day marriage events, which can be done on one event only. So this is wala tubazir tabzira. Do not waste your money. And Allah gave one reason for it. In the kanu ikhwana shayateen. That the reason why Allah is asking you not to waste your money in the haram and useless thing is because the people who waste their money like this, they are the brothers of shaitan. Now we need to ask why Allah has given this analogy. The people who waste their money in a haram way, they are brothers of shaitan. And you will get the idea uh, that usually one of the job description of shaitan, as Allah mentioned in Surah Mada at number 91, is that, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانَ يُقْيَعْ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةِ one of the prime responsibility of shaitan is to create animosity and hatred between two brothers or two sisters who love each other. This is Surah Mada at number 91. So when a person wastes his money like this, whether in haram things or even in halal things, but he's just wasting money while he doesn't need to spend that much money. So it will going to cause hatred in the community, in the less fortunate Hearts. So I'll give you an example. When a poor person sees his daughter can get married in some of these some of these ter, uh, third world countries, that my daughter cannot get married, but my boss is spending millions and millions of money um, on on their kids' lavish weddings, then it will naturally create hatred in the heart of this person that my kids cannot get married just because they cannot afford the standards which are set by you guys. So it will going to eventually cause corruption. It will eventually cause hatred. So that's why it's extremely important for us to stay moderate, even if we have the halal sources, halal, halal income. Um, but it's very important for be, uh, for us to stay moderate. Okay. Allah says, You know, many times um, when uh, we ourselves are struggling, you might get the opportunity. Someone might come in your family or in community and they might ask you, uh, brother, why don't you give this? Why don't you donate this? So Allah says, maybe there are some times and you are struggling yourself. What to do at that time? So if at that time, if you are hoping to get Allah's mercy and if you are struggling struggling yourself, do not scream at them. Then why are you always asking me? I'm struggling myself. Instead, say to them gentle, nice, decent words. Even at that time, you have to show the good character. There are two extremes Allah SWT is mentioning about reaching financial goals. First is that do not make your hands tied or chained to your neck. Means do not be stingy. And other extreme is or extend it completely. Means open it completely that you are spending everything without saving. Allah SWT is telling us a financial wisdom here. When you are spending the wealth, Neither you have to be stingy nor you have to waste your money. You have to stay in the moderate path. So driving a nice car, having a nice car is not haram if you can afford it in a halal way. But if you have 2019 car and 2018, 2020 comes and you will just trade in just because you want to uh, follow the, you want to have, you want to get the latest model, that might not be okay. That might not be okay just because of this disease that I have to get everything latest even though you don't have any other intention. So Allah says, وَلَا تَجِعَ الْيَدَكَ مَغْلُولَ إِلَىٰ عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَفْصُطْحَ كُلَّ الْبَسْتِ You have to stay in the moderate path. Then Allah says, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَبْسُطُ رِزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِعَبَادِهِ خَبِيرًا بَصِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, your Lord extends provision for whom he wills and restricts it. So some people, when Allah, Allah has given them so much, it's because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's planning. Maybe if Allah will reduce their wealth, they will become distracted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is giving them more. And for some people, Allah is giving them very controlled, restricted risk. If Allah will give them more, they will become distracted. So Allah is giving them less. Innahu kana bi'abadi khabiran basir. Allah is all aware of their circumstances. Allah is going 
uh, forward to the community uh, obligations that do not kill your awlad khashyata imlaq um for the out, out of fe- for the fear of poverty people do this nowadays as an as an uh, as an abortion back in the days it was done in a different way that okay my financial goals will not be met i have three kids already let me abort the fourth child if you're doing this for financial goals not because of the uh, health reasons for the mother then it's haram so nahnu narzuquhum wa iyyakum we are giving risk to your kids and we are giving risk to you don't do that wala taqrabu zina innahu kana fahishatan wa asaa sabila and do not approach zina do not even come close to zina indeed it's a it's a it's a very evil way and it's a clear immorality um uh, see here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even say do not do zina allah says do not even come close to zina means those path which will take us close to zina do not even come close to that so not only zina but even the path of zina like gender interaction like texting or like talking to in, you know, a stranger of opposite gender you need to make sure that i'm not approaching that path of zina or which will take me to zina i'm staying away from that innahu kana fahishatan wa sa'a sabila um and then allah says wala taqtulu an-nafsa allati harrama allah illa bil haqq i have to rush up because we only have 3 minutes left and we have almost 8 to 9 ayat left subhanallah um wala taqtulu an-nafsa allati harrama allah illa bil haqq and do not kill do not murder anyone so here we see after mentioning zina allah says do not murder there is a relationship subhanallah um that zina and murder are mentioned together first of all they both are major sin secondly murdering someone is a physical murder zina is actually the spiritual murder of yourself or the uh, murder of the soul so murder of physical body and murder of soul are mentioned together wala taqrabul mal al yatim mal al yatim illa bil lati hiya ahsan hatta yablugha ashudda and do not approach the property of an orphan um this is also um one of the things which uh, we are being told that do not eat up the wealth you are being trusted by the orphans fa- orphans parent uh, so if you have their wealth do not eat up do not break their trust wa awfu bil ahd inna al ahd kana mas'ula and fulfill your commitments whether this commitment is at the individual capacity or this commitment is at the contractual like marriage capacity you will take care of your wife you will take care of your husband and like whether it's commitment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will going to worship him even at the individual level we muslims have to work very hard to fulfill our commitments from the from the very bottom i will going to say that uh, the look at the idea of um, printing on the marriage cards that okay nikah will be at 7 pm dinner will be at 8 pm and this is our commitment and most of the times you will going to see subhanallah that we are not fulfilling that commitment um so we have to work very hard on these things wa awfu al kayla idha kiltum wazinu bil qistas al mustaqim and give the full measure uh, when you are measuring something or weighing something this is actually uh, allah is asking us not to cheat in the business and not to cheat in the job um you make you have to make sure you are ethical and loyal person showing business ethics and subhanallah maybe for one product you might cheat and you might earn more might fooling someone but eventually you are consumer of many other products and if you will be cheated by other people eventually it will be a corrupt society and you will going to have loss long term so allah says do not do that wala taqfu ma laysa laka bihi ilm inna as-sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula and allah says and do not pursue that of which you do not have any knowledge many accusations many slanders will go and many allegations will go and you will going to become engrossed to the social media screen what's going on do not do that in the sama wal basara wal fuad every single second your your heart your eyes your ears allah will going to question about that what you are pursuing in knowledge so make sure uh, whatever we are pursuing we have a um, uh, evidence for it wala tamshi fi fil ardi wala tamshi fil ardi marha innaka lan takhriq lan lan takhriq al ardi wa lan tablugh al jibal tula and do not walk upon the earth arrogantly indeed you will never tear the earth you will never break the earth and you will never reach the mountains in terms of their height this is uh, the last advice in this passage from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that do not be arrogant um uh, because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is saying that you can not equal to uh, you can you cannot um, uh, equal Uh, get equal to the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you cannot um, uh, neither tear the earth nor reach the mount, uh, high, high, mountains or in height usually this is a sign of an arrogant person walk he walks uh, in a way that he will going to make sure his chest is flexed 
as so Allah says that be humble in your walking and it's a manifestation of an arrogance so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us benefit from this inshallah if you have any questions and if I can answer then please go ahead if not inshallah we will end Jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum Jazakallah khair, uh, Imam Asif. So, inshallah, we'll begin now the Q&A session. So, please submit your questions in writing uh, through the questions tab uh, in the webinar. Um, I noticed that there were some technical issues with seeing the full screen with the eyes scrolling. So, apologies for that. We'll, we'll try and do better uh, next time, inshallah. So, inshallah, the first question um, relates to fulfilling the rights of parents. Um, some of us, uh, we may not um, have both of our parents alive, one or both of them. Uh, can you explain how one can fulfill the rights of parents when either one or both of them is deceased? Yeah, mashallah. mashallah, it's a very good question. Um, uh, Brother Shwa, can you mute the mic or I don't know whose mic is turned on. Yeah, so um, it's, 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 a, it's a very good question, mashallah. So if the parents are not alive, uh, then what we can do? So first thing is that um, uh, you have to lead their janazah and you have to make a lot of dua for them. Uh, that's their right, even after they're that. This dua which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Rabbir hamhuma kama rabbayani sagheera. Allah have mercy on them, just like they had mercy on me when I was young. You can also ask this dua when they pass away. Because they will uh, be needing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, um, uh, even after they're that, if not more. Um, third, uh, apart from making dua for them, you can do actually good deeds for them. If they haven't performed hajj, you can perform hajj for them. If they haven't um, fast for the obligatory and they owe some fasting, you can fast on their behalf as mentioned in Sahih uh, Bukhari. Um, uh, and um, you can do random good deeds in uh, in their name. You can also uh, do something beneficial, uh, like a charity uh, donation to the school or anything which will going to with the with the intention that they will get the reward. Um, inshallah. So, as uh, this is a sign of um, fulfilling their rights. One of the other thing what you can do is actually uh, take care of their relatives, uh, because once you'll meet their relatives. Uh, guess what you were going to discuss? Uh, the, 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 the relatives were going to say how nice your father was, and eventually the discussion will come up. Um, so all these things, you can pay off their debt if there are any. All these things are mentioned by the scholar that how you can fulfill the rights of your parents after uh, they passed away. Wallahu alam. Jazakallah, Karim. Um, the next question is about wasting. And in the verses we learned that wasting is likened to having a relationship um, as a brother with shaitan it's difficult to waste when you don't have very much uh, <laughs> but living in this part of the world where many of us enjoy the blessings of allah in abundance the concept of waste becomes even more relevant to us so if we have, if we're fortunate enough that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a lot and we have more than what we uh, require for our needs, um, are we actually wasting by um, spending the rest of that money uh, on, on ourselves beyond, beyond our needs? And related to that concept of wasting, there's a specific question on uh, investing in stocks and shares. If we have excess money, um, is this the best use of our money by investing in, in things like stocks and shares? So um, in, in, for the first, uh, this, uh, I agree that the uh, American Muslim community is one of the most luxurious Muslim community throughout the globe uh, because of our lifestyle, because of the resources we have, subhanAllah. Um, uh, and this is one of the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes Allah will test some people by taking something from them. Allah is testing our Muslim community in America by giving us so much, mashallah. Um, but uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us success in this exam. I mean, Ya Rab. Now, what can be done? Um, first, um, we need to understand that most of these uh, these these things, uh, like whether I give you the example of Atlantic City, Vegas, uh, spending money here, this is just done by the disposable income. 
So one thing we need to understand, if we have extra money, we have money more than our need. Yes, you need to invest in your business. You need to be smart. You need to save some money for your family. Um, uh, you need to you need to keep at least uh, money so that you can buy a house, you can buy a car or cars if you have a, fa a big family. And then after that, obviously you have to give a good portion uh, in, in, in charity. So one of the things which we learn in these, these ayat is to be moderate. Um, and not to make any emotional decision. Um, I didn't have time, otherwise I would have elaborated that. Allah, just remember that Allah says, وَلَا تَجِعَ لِيَدَكَ مَقْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَبْسُسَا قُلَّ الْبَسْتِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَلُومًا مَحْسُورًا Allah says, do not become stingy and do not spend completely. Um, just try to stay in the moderate path. So yes, we should invest in the business if we can, if we have an opportunity for a halal business. And at the same time, um, we have to give the charity because eventually our ultimate goal of getting more money after fulfilling our needs is to um, help the humanity and help the community. Don't forget this. Um, about um, investing in stocks, um, as long as it's halal uh, company, not the Budweiser, not anything. If its company is halal, um, then uh, there's nothing wrong in uh, uh, investing in stocks. Uh, but obviously, this is completely different debate about fickle finances, and that's not our topic. Our topic was sort of the listrat tafsir of you, Ayat. Okay, Jazakallah, Karen. Can we read Quran on behalf of our dead relative? Would they get the thawab? Yes, um, uh, inshallah, if you were going to read uh, the Quran um, and on behalf of your parents, behalf of your loved one, inshallah, they will get the reward. Uh, this is not debatable. Debatable is the issue, which is uh, uh, when you will ask someone else to read the Quran um, on, on your loved one, on behalf of your loved one, that is debatable. But this is everyone agreed to do any good thing. And to make an intention that my parents will get the reward, inshallah, inshallah, Allah will going to reward them. Can you discuss the need for Muslim nursing homes in the USA for sick Muslims who may not be able to take care of themselves at home due to medical issues? So it's um, again, can you repeat it, uh, brother, uh, brother Shak? What you said? Yeah. Can you discuss the need for Muslim nursing homes in the US? for sick Muslims who may not be able to be taken care of at home due to medical issues? Yes, actually, we Muslims need so many projects right now, whether it's nursing homes, whether it's shelter house for women. Um, but subhanAllah, because of uh, lack of resources, we are living as a minority. Uh, lack of resources, we just need to make priorities. But obviously, each and everything, especially um, even nursing homes are important but subhanallah is this about uh, where do we spend our given resources because I know uh, when it comes to do things there's so many projects which are needed which are need of the hour but um, we need to make serious priority at the national level and that's why it's very important subhanallah to be a part of any national organization so that we can think big we can come out of that petty issues and we can think big of benefiting the ummah um, but yeah, uh, I guess it's it's very much needed. But uh, before that, we need to do our homework. That uh, what is our priority? Okay. On the topic of um, when our parents live overseas, how can we do Ehsan on parents uh, when we live very far away from them? Um, should we be considering ourselves guilty of not fulfilling their rights living so far away from them? Uh, I think it depends on circumstances um, because some circumstances uh, will not even allow so for them to come here and your risk is here. Um, so so it, first of all, it, it varies from person to person. Um, but there are many ways. So if you can travel, I would tra I would say once in an year, you should definitely travel. If you can, if you financially and uh, from your job, there is no restriction. Um, and secondly, you should give them at least a call every day for two to five minutes now. WhatsApp is there, no worries. So uh, there's no financial burden. Even if your parents were going to see your face for two, three minutes, 
just see the glance, just see, just see you are driving to work and calling them, it will make them happy. Even if you have, don't have anything to discuss, if you run out of things, don't worry, just give them a call. Wallahi, that's that's Wabil Walidini Ahsana, inshallah, for them. Um, and then to re- send them random gift, uh, Eid gift, this gift, that gift, eventually, inshallah, and rend- not only the occasional gift, but random gift eventually, because remember, Ahsan is to do something which is not expect expecting from you, like an extra favor. Eventually, inshallah, this will make them happy. Uh, so, but yeah, obviously, when you are away with your parents, and I guess most of the immigrant family who, uh, immigrant Muslims who have come to America, they have uh, been going through this. Um, so it's it's not the luxury of staying with your parents and earning Jannah, but at the same time, you can do a lot to compensate that deficiency, inshallah. Okay. Sometimes there can be a conflict between pleasing the parents and pleasing the, the spouse. And what advice would you give when these conflicts happen where the spouse gets upset because too much attention is placed on the parents or the parents get upset because too much attention is placed um, on the spouse. Um, What advice would you give people on how to manage this? Yeah, subhanAllah, this is a big topic about in-laws, subhanAllah. But I will just mention a few things. Um, uh, um, You need to understand uh, one thing as a person. Um, If you are a husband, let's say, um, then with husband with his parents, he have a primary, primary relationship. Husband with his wife, he have a primary relationship. But his wife and his mother, they both have a secondary relationship. So if your wife and your mother is not having good relationship within themselves, it does not mean that their secondary relationship should impact your primary relationship. It means... Even if they don't have a good relationship, even then, you are a good son and you are a good husband. Uh, That should be, in my mind, the rule of thumb that their secondary relationship should not affect my primary relationship. Now, Islamic ruling, uh, is it recommended to serve your Um, in-laws? It's it's, it's not wajib, but it's recommended. um, And we should not abuse this. Um, And obviously, understanding the concept of ihsan should be there. um, That uh, if if... I will ask my wife that, okay, can you take care of my old parents, uh, even though it's not wajib on you? And similarly, if she, if she will take care, then you have to take care of her parents also. And then concept of ihsan will come, al jazaul ihsani illa ihsan And she also have to think that, subhanAllah, my, the parents are old. Even if they say something, I have to have a thick skin. I will be patient. Allah will reward me more. Even though it's not wajib, but it's recommended to uh, treat old people in a gentle way. Eventually, when you will see every everything from Ahsan perspective and not from legal perspective, these things uh, can we can we can eradicate these things. And even at the same time, you need to understand that parents um, uh, need to ha- know their limits. They don't need to just interfere uh, in the life of the husband and wife. Because as a as a per- imam who is involved in the marital counseling, I'm telling you this a shocking statistics that one of the big reason of divorces in Muslim community especially within the immigrant Muslim community in America, is the in-laws interference. So this is a very big topic. But rule of thumb is that my primary relationship should not be destroyed because of their secondary relationship. You mentioned um, two terms, israf and tabzir. Can you please explain again what these two terms mean? So the word israf uh, is used for wasting of money and the word tabzir is used for wasting of money in the Islamic law. In the Quran, in the Hadith, you will see different ayat and ahadith. Israf, when it's used for wasting of money, um, israf literally means to waste money on, on some of the halal things or some of the things which you need to do, but you are actually doing wasting more than required. You're doing more than required. Like if you're making a wudu, Wudu is something which is needed. It is a part of Islam, uh, your your daily practice. But you are wasting water. You're wasting water while making wudu. That we can call this, that this is israf. You are wasting natural resources. We won't say this is tabzir, this is israf. And actually, this is what Rasulullah said to a sahaba when he was making wudu and in, from the flowing water and he was wasting water. Now, tabzir is actually an intense form of wasting resources or wasting money. Um, some scholars say tabzir is to spend money on the haram things or some say tabzir is even if you are spending on the halal things not necessarily technically haram 
but that's unnecessary things so a marriage can be done just by one event even if you can afford mashallah you can throw a party with so many guests of good food but now one event is required that's a sunnah that's a part of walima that's a part of religion but if you, you know some cultures um, unfortunately in some muslim cultures they have a um, ridiculous parties and series of parties it looks like that um, uh, a nfl tournament is going on um, and then big ultimate walima will come like a super bowl so um, in in that case um, um, that is called a tabzir that you are spending millions and thousands and thousands of dollar in five six seven marriage events that is not needed so we can consider that as a part of tabzir um, i hope this is clear now uh, israf is less uh, intensified tabzir is more uh, of a haram nature okay, inshallah this will be the last question uh, it relates to specifically women um, who get married and then move away with their husbands. Um, and this then presents a, a larger challenge in terms of um, fulfilling the rights of parents because the women are, are so far away. And although we've already covered this in the context of uh, parents who, who live overseas, um, are there any specific advices that you can give uh, for women uh, who live very far away because they got married uh, and perhaps also for the husbands to to facilitate um, the women to care for their parents yeah it's actually very important and very good question i guess the one word to understand all this relationship is the moderation um so obviously you have to be you have to do ihsan even after your marriage with your parents um, I'm talking about women being doing ihsan with her parents. If they are living in the same neighborhood or even let's say overseas, uh, you have to call them, you have to talk to them, you have to invite them, you have to visit them. And the spouse need to understand this, that even though she is my wife, but she is at the same time daughter and sister. Uh, so she, uh, without feeling bad, you have to let your wife spend some time. Again, <laughs> mark my words, without feeling bad. Um, and sometimes you have to, to become proactive that you didn't visit uh, your parents. Uh, let me just uh, let me just uh, make a plan so that we can go and visit. Um, and then try to spend and, and even um, you should not feel bad if your wife is spending time with her parents without inviting you because she wants her own separate time also. So that understanding need to be developed. Um, and I guess that understand usually comes with time in the marriage. And at the same time, there is vice versa also remember i told you the word moderation that um if you are talking with your mother every day on whatsapp two three four hours a day after the marriage and that is affecting your marriage um in whatever way um that you can you are distracted and you cannot spend time with your husband um and eventually uh the the household is affected that is also not good so you need to make sure that there's a fine balance and fine line between both because now you both have a separate family, whether it's a guy's parents or a girl's parents, they need to understand that both the husband and wife, they have a separate family in and itself. Uh, despite the fact Quran is asking them to do ihsan with us as our parents, but they have their own separate family. So we should actually leave them alone in many of their life's decisions. So inshallah, just remember the word of moderation for both husband and wife as they are going to uh, the, the marriage phase, inshallah. Okay, Jazakallah Khair. Uh, mashallah, that was uh, very good advice, um, um, Imam Asif. Uh, with that, we'll conclude today's session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Awudu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asr. Innal insan la fi khus. Illa allazina amanu wa aminu as-sanihat. Wa tawasaw bil haq. Wa tawasaw bil sabr. Sadaqallahu azim. Assalamu alaikum.